So let's talk a bit about parallel access to files and how that integrates with our phases of MapReduce execution. So firstly, a MapReduce job processes all files in one directory. That means it provides parallelism on the file level. Each file is read independently. So I can store 10 text files in one directory and basically process all of them at the same time with one job. MapReduce job process records that are grouped in input splits. So the input split is a logical organization of blocks, of things that belong together. And each input split is processed by one mapper. So there is also a process for record spanning multiple blocks, and we'll talk about this later. So the, how the file format is laid out into these blocks is decided by the input splitting which depends on the file format. Right? Depending on the file format you have, it might do this smarter or not. So file formats that are not cannot be splitted and thus not parallelized must be avoided. XML files and JSON files, for example, are tricky to parallelize because you never know in which depth of this hierarchical um, annotation you are. And this enforces then sequential read by one mapper, which is not what we want. We want parallel access, fast access. So the file format you can use depends on the tools that you may use to query the data, obviously. But Hadoop itself supports a variety of file formats that we talked about before. So here's an example. We have our a large file, 530 megabyte, that is split into 128 chunks of blocks. So we have here a chunk, here a chunk of, here another block, here one. So you see I used the, the word chunk, sometimes a bit interrelated and uh, exchangeable to data block. It, it's basically the same, but it's a chunk of a file which results in one block. You have one small block at the end. Okay, now we have our logical mapping of input splits of data that belongs together, which is shown here. And uh, you can see that it, here this split eight overlaps between block A and B. Okay, so some data is on block A, some data is on block B. It's not a big problem, it can be resolved. Now let's pull all of this together and dive into the big picture of executing MapReduce. So we have our files on HDFS and we, we have an input format defining how they are stored. We started our job, our MapReduce job, so it figures out how to split this input format in, into this logical, what we said here, input splits. And each input split is then tied to a so-called record reader that pulls out individual records. Okay, it's a little bit like the CSV file. We proce can process one line at a time. These are fed into the map process which generates our key value pairs, runs through the partitioner and the shuffling process that sorts ultimately the data and assigns it to a reducer, one or multiple reducers, and stores the data again in an output format as a file. So in this case, we see also how it's mapped to two nodes. So we can have one job that is started by the user that is executed on two nodes. And on each node, we have here three map processes and we have one reduce process each reducer producing one file and basically self-contained, you can read from this other file then and running another MapReduce. So you can process outputs again and again, generating new data, repeating another map and reduce cycle using this kind of figure, which is why there is this loop, stored data is stored on HDFS and used again as input in the next. Good, if we look, zoom a bit in, to the mapping, we can see that at the end of the local mappers, we have our combiner where we set reduces the data volume before it's fed into the network shuffling process. So we can look a little bit more how the execution of MapReduce tasks is actually performed. So the client submits a job to the job tracker. The job tracker identifies the location of the data using the name node. Then it locates task tracker nodes with three slots close to the data. It starts the task on the task tracker nodes, sending also the code to execute. Then 
it has to wait until it's completed. It just not only necessarily wait only, it also monitors the execution and the progress therein, which is very nice. It's also done using heartbeat signals and allows you on the job tracker to constantly see the status. So, so you would know, oh, I have processed 50% of the data, now 60%, which gives you a sense of how long it would take to complete your MapReduce job. You will find this information also in this graphical figure, but I'm not going over it again. Think about it. So what happens if data isn't local? So in this example, it may be that you have a, a map task running on data node 2, um, where there are no slots available anymore. In this case, you have to run the job on data node 1, for instance, and data node 1 would say, oh, I need the block A from HDFS, which then contacts data node 2 and retrieves the data here to data node 1 and kind of processes it. This is again, as it is contained within the rack, at least to some extent more efficient than requesting data from a totally different node. Okay, it would be not make no sense on rack 9 to request data block A, okay? which was this very awareness concept that we talked about. Good, <clears throat> so how does reduction work? Here from this mapping of hardware, so we have three map tasks. Each of them has done the local reduction, in this case summing up how big is the refund. So in this case, the case was how often does the word refund appear in the file, okay? So refund appears three times, zero times, here 11 times. So it goes into the reducer which then store the data into one file saying refund was 14 times. And this file name is pretty much defined by the client and so the client can later read this file again. And as a reducer, produce, as each reducer produces one file, you actually would find that the client would have to retrieve multiple files and that is when you use this get merge command that we learned from HDoop FS. 